this video, I have compiled some footage about automation. In particular, footage that covers some of the fears, anxieties, and concerns about the encroachment of automation, automated systems, and robots on human jobs. Here's a question I would like you to think about when watching this footage. Hypothetically speaking, is there a job that humans do that automated systems can't do? Expressed otherwise, can you think of any job that an automated system couldn't do in the future? If the answer is no, then no jobs are safe in the future, which raises a question, if all jobs in the future are automated, then what will humans do for work? When you think of automation, you probably think of this, giant, custom-built, expensive, efficient, but really dumb robots blind to the world and their own work. They were a scary kind of automation, but they haven't taken over the world because they're only cost-effective in narrow situations. But they're the old kind of automation. This is the new kind. Meet Baxter. Unlike these things which require skilled operators and technicians and millions of dollars, Baxter has vision and can learn what you want him to do by watching you do it, and he costs less than the average annual salary of a human worker. Unlike his older brothers, he isn't pre-programmed for one specific job. He can do whatever work is within the reach of his arms. Baxter is what might be thought of as a general purpose robot, and general purpose is a big deal. Think computers. They too start out as highly custom and highly expensive, but when cheap-ish general-purpose computers appeared, they quickly became vital to everything. A general-purpose computer can just as easily calculate change, or assign seats on an airplane, or play a game, or do anything just by swapping its software. And this huge demand for computers of all kinds is what makes them both more powerful and cheaper every year. Baxter today is the computer of the 1980s. He's not the apex, but the beginning. Even if Baxter is slow, his hourly cost is pennies worth of electricity while his meat-based competition costs minimum wage. A tenth of the speed is still cost-effective when it's a hundredth the price. And while Baxter isn't as smart as some of the other things we will talk about, he's smart enough to take over many low-skilled jobs. And we've already seen how dumber robots than Baxter can replace jobs. In new supermarkets, what used to be 30 humans is now one human overseeing 30 cashier robots. Or take the hundreds of thousands of baristas employed worldwide. There's a barista robot coming for them. Sure, maybe your guy makes the double mocha whatever just perfect and you'd never trust anyone else, but millions of people don't care and just want a decent cup of coffee. Oh, and by the way, this robot is actually a giant network of robots that remembers who you are and how you like your coffee no matter where you are. Pretty convenient. We think of technological change as the fancy new expensive stuff, but the real change comes from last decade stuff getting cheaper and faster. That's what's happening to robots now. And because their mechanical minds are capable of decision making, they are out competing humans for jobs in a way no pure mechanical muscle ever could. Imagine a pair of horses in the early 1900s talking about technology. One worries all these new mechanical muscles will make horses unnecessary. The other reminds him that everything so far has made their lives easier. Remember all that farm work? Remember running from coast to coast delivering mail? Remember riding into battle? All terrible. These new city jobs are pretty cushy, and with so many humans in the cities, there will be more jobs for horses than ever. Even if this car thingy takes off, he might say, there will be new jobs for horses we can't imagine. But you, dear viewer, from beyond 2000, know what happened. There are still working horses, but nothing like before. The horse population peaked in 1915. From that point on, it was nothing but down. There isn't a rule of economics that says better technology makes more better jobs for horses. It sounds shockingly dumb to even say that out loud, but swap horses for humans and suddenly people think it sounds about right. As mechanical muscles pushed horses out of the economy, mechanical minds will do the same to humans. No a decade ago, robots still seemed pretty limited. Now, not so much. And computers don't just win chess anymore, they can win Jeopardy. Watson, what is the elegance of the hedgehog? They can win Go. There are about 200 possible moves for the average position in Go. This is all happening really fast, and it's causing some to forecast a future where humans can't find work. There will be fewer and fewer jobs that a robot cannot do better. And what are the people going to do? That's the $64,000 question. I believe this is going to be one of the biggest challenges we face in the coming decades. People who are not just unemployed, they are unemployable. But if 
As always, thank you for your kind attention. Take care.